Today, we'll be learning how to create this particular animation where you take particles and they move around in 3D space to form your logo with some thickness in 3D. It's going to be using simulation nodes and quite a lot of math. So we're going to go through it step by step so that you can understand why we do what we do. And with that, let's begin the tutorial. The first thing that you need to do in your default scene is actually import the logo as an SVG. To do that, go to your edit preferences and then go to the add ons tab and just search for scalable vector graphics. So you're going to have to check the add on that says import export SVG and then just go ahead and press save preferences. Once you've saved it, you can go ahead and press X to delete that. And then you can go to file import and you should find the option that says scalable vector graphics so select it and then go to where you have your SVG stored and click import SVG now I'm using the fat rats logo because I wanted to use Nefex's logo because I used a lot of his music as well but I couldn't find an SVG for Nefex's logo which gave me an idea to create another tutorial tomorrow showing you how you can do the exact same thing with planes instead of SVGs now even though I imported the SVG you can't really see it and that's for two reasons the first is that it's imported at the origin and is hidden by the default cube so I'll just grab the default cube on the y-axis and move it to the side and the next issue is that it's really small that's why I, even now I can't see it but if you zoom in you see that it's there over there so that might happen for most SVGs so what you should do is just highlight everything and then press S and just bring it up by quite a big number so I'll go with 50 once you've scaled it up I want all of them to be one single object so that it's easier for me to do all of the edits later on so I'll just select any one of the curves and then press ctrl J and it automatically becomes one single curve next I can go to object set origin and change it to geometry so that it comes to the center after which I can press alt G to bring it to the absolute center apart from that I can also rotate it on the x-axis by 90 degrees because I want this to be facing in the forward direction now that I have this particular logo I can just hide it because we don't need it for now and then I can select the cube and press alt G to bring it back to the center now this is what's going to act as our geometry node object so we'll bring our cursor to the junction of these two windows click and drag to create a new window and then change this from the 3d viewport to the geometry node editor now we'll press this plus button to create a new geometry node tree and since we don't need the default cube we'll select our group input and press x to delete it now the first thing that we need is the actual logo so we'll take the curve from our outliner and just click and drag it in and now we can directly plug the geometry into the group output and we should be able to see it. If we don't see it, the first thing that we have to do is change from original to relative so that it takes into account all the changes that we made to it. Next up, I want this particular logo to actually get some sort of thickness. And to do that, I'll press shift A and search for an extrude mesh node and just plug that in. Now, one issue that I have faced with this particular logo is that a few of the vertices seem to be flipped. However, because we're doing this in 3D with volumes, these extruding points don't make a difference so even if you do have issues like this it's not an issue now we don't want it to be this fat so I'll go ahead and change the offset scale down to something like 0.3 and that should be thick enough for my liking next up I don't want all of these faces to be present in the middle over here so I just uncheck individual and that makes it much better now the next thing that we have to do is actually create a back plane so that we can convert it into a volume nicely to create the back plane we just have to join this with the original mesh so I'll press shift and search for a join geometry node and I can direct directly plug this into the original mesh. However, when we do this, the actual inside is placed incorrectly, which means the normals are flipped. If you actually switch on back face culling, you'll see that it disappears. So we don't want that. And to fix that, we have to just flip the faces. So I'll press shift A and search for a flip faces node. And when I plug that in, it looks proper even with back face culling switched on. Now that we have this, I want to convert this into a bunch of points. To do that, I have to first convert it into a volume. So I press shift A and search for a mesh to volume node and plug that in after the joint geometry. Now I need this resolution to be very, very high because if it's not high you can clearly see that you don't see the logo at all so to increase the resolution you have to increase the voxel amount so I'll go with something like 512 and remember the higher you go the longer it will take you can see the time it takes by using this particular overlay which is the timings overlay and this is just taking two seconds to calculate however because we're using simulation nodes this is going to be calculated only once and that's why it's not too much of an issue even if it is taking quite a lot of time next we need to distribute points within this space so I'll press shift and search for a distribute points in volume node and I'll just plug that in after the mesh to volume now I'll go ahead and just increase the density all the way to something like 100 and in case your laptop or your computer is taking too long to actually calculate anything what you could do is for the time being decrease the voxel amount to something lower so 128 for now and just play around till you get a density that's dense enough so I think even 1000 is way too low let's go with 10,000 that starts to look fine 
but another thing that you could do is increase the density on the mesh to volume so maybe increase this density to 10 and that should make it nice and dense now the points are way too large which is why you can't see any of the details so to just change that for viewing purposes i'll press shift and search for a set point radius node plug that in after the distribute points in volume and change the radius down to 0.01 now you can't see any of the details and that's why we'll go to the voxel amount and just start increasing this till we see all of the details so 256 or 512 should be fairly good but if you still don't see any of the features you have to play around with the actual bandwidth so i'm just going to go ahead and change this exterior bandwidth from 0.1 down to 0 and then you should immediately be able to see all of the different features of the logo now clearly there still isn't enough number of points so i'll increase the density even further by either changing the density on the distribute points and volume or in the mesh to volume so for now i'll just increase it on the mesh to volume up to something like 20 and i think a density of 50 is looking good so now that we have every single point that's going to form our 3d logo we need to actually create the points that will reach these 3d logos so to do that we have to create a volume cube and distribute points within that we have to make sure that the number of points being distributed is roughly equal to the number of points present in this particular section that we created till now hence to find the number of points in this particular section we press shift a and search for a domain size and plug that in now we have to keep this connected to the output so that we can actually see it and along with that i also want to see the actual size of the box that we want so to have both the box and this logo present i'll press shift a and search for a join geometry node and just plug that in and to make the calculations faster instead of using this particular section i'll directly use the join geometry from here and plug that in without this so this will just help us calculate it a bit faster so now let's create the actual exterior box so i'll press shift and search for a volume cube and this is where all of the math is going to come in now my volume cube has this min and max size which i want to keep symmetric about the x y and z and that'll actually help with the math as well but essentially let's first look at what the size of the cube looks like so we plug that in and clearly it's not big enough to cover the entire logo so it has to be increased on the x-axis by a bit a little bit on the z-axis as well and i want to reduce Reduce it on the y-axis so instead of controlling these manually like this since i know that the minimum is always going to be the negative value of the maximum what i'll do is i'll press shift a and search for a combined xyz node and i'll press shift a and search for a vector math node and i'll change this vector math from add to scale and just scale it by minus one and that way it'll always be the negative of whatever comes out from this combined xyz let's plug this in and plug this into the min and this into the max now we actually have to give it some values so we could control it directly from here but I want to use these values later on. So instead, I'll press Shift A and search for a value node and then press Shift D to duplicate it twice so that we get three different value nodes. Now, just to keep everything organized, I'll go to the node over here and label this as X. Then I'll take this one and label it as Y. And the last one I'll label as Z. Then I'll just plug these right in to the combined XYZ. And now I can start playing around with it. So let's start off with a value of one on each of them and then play around. So the X has to be increased. So let's increase it till it's covered. And to see the right angle, you can press one to go in into the front view and just stay around till it's covered so i think a value of two is good enough for the y i don't need it to be this fat so i'll press three to go into the side view and just decrease it down to 0 0.6 that seems fine and for the z again i'll press one and just increase it to maybe 1.2 now that we have all of the cube created we need to convert this into a bunch of points so to convert it into a bunch of points i'll press shift a and search for a distribute points in volume node but this time instead of keeping it from random we'll change it to grid and that way we can actually control the exact number of points that are going to come but we need to actually figure out the spacing between the x y and z to get the exact number of points as created from this particular setup up here so let's just bring this to the side and start playing around with the math now let's just go through some fundamentals we know that volume is going to be equal to length into breadth into height and since we're using a length equal to this in both the positive and negative directions so in this case the x value goes from minus 2 to plus 2 so the actual value of the x is 4. The actual value of the y is actually 0.6 into 2. So that is 1.2 and so on and so forth. So each of these values are actually being multiplied by 2. So the total volume is going to be this xyz, xyz into 8 because we have 2 into 2 into 2, which forms 8. To find the necessary distribution, you have to divide the number of points that we got by this particular number. And then to actually find the correct distribution, we have to find the cube root of that. And the cube root of that is essentially anything to the power 1 by 3 so the exponent has to be 1 by 3 and that way we'll find the cube root now the reason why we're finding the cube root is because we want an equal distribution on the x y and z 
as in the spacing over here. And essentially, once we do that, we'd have to divide that number by one because the spacing is such that if you decrease the spacing, you get more points. And if you increase the spacing, you get lesser points. So that's why if we do one divided by that number, we'll get the exact value for the spacing necessary. So let's actually try and figure that out by doing it. Hopefully that'll help understand it better. So let's press shift A and search for a multiply node or a math node and then set it to multiply. And once you've set it to multiply, just connect the X to the first socket, Y to the second socket, and then take this multiply node, press shift D. This value goes into the top socket. This one goes into the bottom socket. So now we have X into Y into Z, but we need to multiply it by eight as well. So I'll press shift D again, change this second value to eight and then plug this value into the first socket. So now that I have all three of these created, I need to divide this domain size by this. And remember the domain size right now, it's a bunch of points. So I have to change this from mesh to point cloud. And that way you just directly get the point count. Now, how we divide these two is by searching for another math node and setting it from add to divide and essentially see we have to distribute this man, these many points within this much volume so that's why it is points divided by the space that we have hopefully that makes sense we're dividing these points within this amount of space and that's the value that we get out over here. Now, just like the last video, which you definitely should check out, when we divide this, we might not get a whole number. And although that's all right, by converting this into a whole number, we will make sure that we have a few extra points as well, no matter what. So to do that, we press Shift A and search for a math node and change it from add to the function called seal, which will always round up to the nearest greater whole number. Now that we have this done, we have to find the cube root because we want to find out how much it should be distributed per axis as well. Well, and to find out one axis, because there are three axes, you have to find the cube root. To find the cube root, we search for another math node and we change it from add to power. And for the exponent, we change it to one by three because that gives the cube root. Now we plug this into the base and this value is essentially giving us the number of points required. And to get the spacing required in this distribute points in volume node, we have to actually invert this particular number. So we press shift A and search for another math node and we change it from add to divide. And and now if we plug this to the second socket and change the first socket value to one, we should get the right amount of spacing necessary to create the logo. So let's plug this into the spacing and now we get the exact number of points necessary. However, because we rounded up over here, we will have a few extra points. And so to remove those points, we have to delete geometry. So I'll press shift and search for a compare node. And this is very similar to the previous tutorial, which again, I highly recommend you check out. It will be linked in the description and then search for an index node because every point has as an index and for all of these points they go from or for all of these points they go from zero to whatever index value they have and if that index is greater than the total number of points from this point count over here then they should be deleted so i change this greater than to greater than or equal to because the index value starts from zero and if this index is greater than this point count then the value or the point should get deleted so i'll press shift and search for a delete geometry node plug that in and then plug this result into the select so now just a few points towards the end should get deleted, which is perfectly all right. Now we actually have to start with the main part of the tutorial, which is the simulation nodes. For the simulation nodes, we first have to find out the position of every single one of these points. And we need to find out the position of these points over here. And we have to slowly move the points from this grid to the points that we're getting out over here. In order to do that, we'll press shift and search for a simulation zone and just plug that in after this delete geometry and plug this into the group output. We don't need this joint geometry anymore. So let's select it and press X to delete it. Next, before we get into the simulation zone, we have to find out the position of these nodes. So to get the position, we press shift a and search for a sample index node and we want to sample the position so we change this from float to vector because position is a vector for the value we search for a position node and for the index we want to find it for every single index so we search for an index node which will iterate through every single point now we plug the points into the geometry and this value is the position of every single one of the points in the logo next to find the vector between these points and the logo we have to subtract them so I press shift A and search for a vector math node, change it from add to subtract, and then plug this value into the first socket. And for the second socket, we just search for a position node. Again, the reasoning as to why we're using the position node in the second socket and this in the first socket and why this position and this position don't result in the same thing is all explained in the previous videos on simulation nodes that I've done. So try out those tutorials as well if you haven't, and you'll get a much better understanding of why we're doing what we're doing so that you can create your own animations as well. Now, this is giving us 
us a vector that's pointing from these grid points to the final position that they should be landing into. So we can plug this directly into the offset, but that way they'll directly move from their position to the final position in one single frame. We don't want that, which you can actually see by going to frame one, it directly gets pushed all the way to the fat rack. Now, again, these points are a bit too large. So I think I'm going to just decrease the size of these points as well for visual purposes by searching for a set point radius node, plugging that in and changing the radius to 0.01. .01. And yeah, directly plugging this in moves it to the final position in one single frame. That's obviously not what we want. So the first thing that we have to do is reduce the size of the vector. That so it doesn't move the entire distance, but it moves only a tiny amount of the distance. So for that, I press shift A and search for a vector math node, change it from add to scale and just plug that in and scale it by 0.1 maybe and now if you play the animation they are going to slowly go into that particular formation so as you can see frame number six seven eight i'm just letting it work essentially it's slowly coming into the position i've waited for 26 frames i don't want to spend too much time right now it's really slow because i'm also recording this screen as well however now that we have it we don't want it to move directly from the points that it was at to the final positions over here so to make it move with some randomness we have to add in some noise so for that i'll press shift and search for another vector math node and change this second socket from zero to a noise texture i press shift and search for a noise texture now remember a noise texture will always add an average of 0.5 we don't want that so i have to search for a vector math node change it from add to subtract and once you've changed it to subtract change the second vector to 0.5 on all of the axes and then plug this color into the first socket and this vector into the second socket of this add node so now we have some noise added in to the actual motion but i want this noise to eventually die out when the final logo is formed otherwise the noise will remain so to help remove the noise towards the end i'll have to take another scale node i can just select this and press shift d plug that in here and i will be keyframing this particular scale value for now i'll keep it at one next i want to control the overall noise as well or the overall motion so that it doesn't directly start moving from frame zero itself but it starts moving a bit later and for that we can use another scale node after this but i think it's also possible for me to just use this scale node as well so that initially they all do move around but they move around randomly in this particular noise textures frame of reference so i think that's all right i won't make too much of an issue by duplicating this node again now another thing that i want is the points that we have right at frame one seems fairly random already which is okay but in case it doesn't you can always search for a set position node before we go into the simulation input and just add in this particular noise texture with the subtract node as well so i can just press shift d bring that here plug this vector into the offset of the set position and i can plug this points into the geometry and have this go out into the input of the simulation input that just adds some more noise to the position of these points which i think looks much better and removes the uniformity which might be present if this noise noise texture is not scaled up all the way to one. Suppose you want lesser noise over here, this scale value might be something really low, maybe 0.1. And that way, if you don't have this noise added in and this goes in directly, you'll see it looks like a solid grid, which you would not want. So in that case, you plug this in and you get the randomness present. Now, the next thing is getting the actual simulation to act like a simulation, which means because there's motion, it should follow that motion and it should continue and slowly get attracted into the final image. There should be some overshoot and it should get attracted back and things like that. So to do that, we have to calculate the initial velocity or the initial position, the final position, subtract the two to get the velocity. I press shift and search for a capture attribute node so that we can get the position at this particular point of time. So plug this in, change the type from float to vector because position is a vector. And for the value, search for a position node and plug that in. Now for the final position, you can directly just use a position node. And to find the difference between them, search for a vector math node, change this from add to subtract, plug position into the first socket and this attribute that we're getting here which is the initial position into the second socket then the output of this can directly go into the simulation output as another socket now to change the name of this socket go to the node tab over here and select the simulation output socket and change the name from vector to velocity this just helps maintain understanding of what is what now the velocity comes into the start as well and for that all we do is search for another set position node plug that in before this set position and plug the velocity into the offset that way a particle that starts moving will definitely continue moving but we also want this velocity to eventually die out because we will reach the final position where the entire animation or the entire logo is revealed so to help it slowly lose speed we need some friction which is as simple as just searching for a vector math node changing it from add to scale changing the scale from 1 to 0 0.9 and then plugging this velocity into the vector 
and this vector into the offset. So that way we have some velocity which will also die out eventually. Now, if you want to actually see the animation, I suggest going to the physics properties over here with the cube selected, which is your geometry node object, expand the simulation nodes and click bake. But to bake it, you first have to save the file. So press control S and just save it. And then you can click bake and wait for it to actually bake all of the frames because that way you'll be able to see how many frames it's taking to actually reach the final logo and all of that as well. All right, so I just finished baking the simulation. Now, if you actually play the animation this is what it looks like so the first thing that i can notice is the vector go taking it in is still way too fast so the scale of 0.1 is also too high so maybe i have to go down to 0 0.01 the next thing is that the simulation finishes by 90 frames itself so i think ending it at 120 will be good enough beyond that i need this scale for the noise texture to eventually die out as we said so till frame 30 we can have the scale at 0 0.1 itself so i'll just hover over it and tap i but by frame 90 i want this value to go all the way down to zero and then i'll press i so now again for it to recalculate you can't bring it back to frame one and just play it because none of the updates will Will be considered so to get the updates to actually be considered you have to delete the bake by pressing this button over here and then rebaking it of course this scale value as well we could animate it but it's really up to you you can play around with this and see whether you want it to start off slow start off fast etc etc but let's just delete this bake and watch how it is for now so that button deletes the bake and then you can press bake again now the simulation has finished baking again so this is what it currently looks like and i think that's all right there are a few changes that i feel like i'll make eventually because right at this beginning i don't want it to move into this position as well this fast so there are a few changes that i'll make but i'll do deal with that later on but this is the effect for now the next thing that we want to do is actually give these their original particles because right now they're just points and also i feel for the final render i will be letting it render for a bit longer because even now the points haven't actually settled into their final positions as of yet you can still see a few of these points are out but that's okay that's for later on for now take this group output press g and move it to the side and then press shift a and search for an instant on points node and plug that in after the simulation output. Now we actually need an instance object so I'll press shift a and search for an icosphere and I'm going to keep the subdivisions down at 1 itself but I'll reduce the radius down to 0 0.01 which was the radius of the points that we used either way. Plug that into the instance and this is what we get. Now it's actual real geometry. Of course I think the radius can do a little lower as well. So I'll make this 0.05 and that seems all right. Now the thing is that this is still in 3D so you can actually see that it has some amount of thickness to it which is really good but we have to play around a little bit more. The first thing is setting the material so I'll press shift and search for a set material node and plug that in. Now I want these particles to be black on a white background because the fact that generally has either black on a white background or white on a black background. So I'm just going to give this the default material over here and I also just want to shade these smooth so that we don't see these particles like this so i'll press shift and search for a set shade smooth node and plug that in after the set material now with that we're done with the geometry node section next we can move on to the actual shading so for that i'll change from the geometry node editor to the shader editor and here i'll press period on my numpad to centralize the nodes we have the default material set so i want these to be black so i'll change the base color down all the way to black and i'll increase the metallic and reduce the roughness down to zero next to actually see the changes reflect we need to change the viewport shading from solid to render and that way you can actually see these black particles but right now you'll see there will be a few tiny reflections happening you can see these one or two dots i don't know if you're able to see it on youtube but a few dots might appear and that's gonna happen if your roughness is down to zero we'll just increase the roughness to one and that way they become a pure black now to make the white background I'll press shift and search for a mesh plane that's rx 90 and then just go gy to move it back by a little bit and then I'll just press s to scale it up and I don't need the default light so I'll select the light from the outliner and press delete to remove it now for the background plane I'll select it go to the material properties and press new to add in a new material and for this one I'm just going to increase the emission all the way to one and the emission color to white and that way we get the background as well for the fat rat now apart from this another thing that you could do is actually go to the world and just increase the world right all the way to a white then you don't even need the plane you can take the plane and delete it if you want the white to be a complete white you can go to your render properties go all the way down to color management expand it and change the view transform from filmic to standard and the white becomes a actual white the black remains an actual black next you can press ctrl alt 0 to snap your camera to view select the camera go to the camera object data properties over here make all of these whole numbers or the nearest numbers that make sense so obviously the rotation should be 90 this should be 0 
zero and this should also be zero apart from that on the x-axis if i make it zero it'll get centralized z-axis zero will also centralize it now the y-axis is what's bringing it back and fitting it into frame so that's all right now once you have it in the right position press shift a and search for an empty plane axis and just scale it up a little bit so that it can be seen and if you switched off overlays you won't be able to see it so just press this button to switch on overlays and now you can see it then we'll select our camera first then shift select the empty and then press Control p set parent to object now on frame zero or frame one i'll actually take the empty press rz 180 and then press i location rotation scale and then by frame 90 i'll just press or Z 180 again and then press I location rotation scale so now if you actually play the animation you should start off with the points and the camera also moves around till you get to the position where all the points are present in the front actually forming the actual logo so that's just something that you can play around with you can always change the camera animation to have it zoom in zoom out maybe go through the particles as well so that way you could select the empty press G Y and just push it through the particles like that that could even be the ending animation press I location rotation scale so now if you watch it, it forms the logo and then you fly right through the logo. So it's really up to you to decide what you want to do with that. But that is essentially it for this particular tutorial. With that, you can always set all of your render defaults by changing your frame rate, changing your output folder and all of that along with the file format and then press render animation. Hopefully you learned something from this video. I know it was a longer one, but I will have timestamps in the description so that you can skip to the exact areas that are relevant for you. I highly recommend checking out the previous few videos that were released on my channel that you get a better grasp of simulation nodes and remember simulation nodes is super powerful and that's why it's definitely worth learning the math might seem complex with vectors and things like that but really it's just simple addition multiplication and applications of the same it's nothing too complex so it's worth reasoning out why you're doing what you're doing and i'm sure you'll be able to understand it as well in the next video i will be going through creating 3d versions of your logos using png images and with that we'll also create some sort of simulation for those logos as well of course we won't have it as a particle simulation but it will be something pretty cool so stay tuned for that subscribe if you watched this far and until the next video comes out keep creating and stay creative